Hello and thank you for your time for today's interview. Can you briefly tell us about yourself to the viewers? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, my name is Aaron. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders for iSwap. Uh, we, we basically run a license um, platform, a DeFi mm -hmm. platform um, licensed out of the Bahamas oh. uh, for retail customers. And we run a DeFi ecosystem for private assets. Um, meaning that we have a DEX, which mm -hmm. is a decentralized exchange for secondary trading. Yeah. It's a bit complex, but the terms are a bit complex, <laughs> it's but it's just secondary it's trading hard, on yeah. an exchange, basically. Right? Cool. And we've, we've also uh, launched a launchpad in the last year or so. Oh, okay. And the launchpad is basically a crowdfunding platform for mm -hmm. cryptocurrency and security tokens on the platform. Excellent. Um, what are the key advantages of STOs compared to traditional security offerings? Um, I think that there are lots of different types of benefits. Okay. Uh, I think one of the benefits that I was talking about today uh, was the different types of utilities that you have on mm -hmm. the different types of assets. Yeah. Like for example, um, in the traditional markets, you have uh, in real estate, you have timeshare, mm -hmm. which is a membership in a hotel. Yeah. Right? And then you have REITs, right? which is an investment in a hotel and you get the returns. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing now in the STO space is a combination of a lot of these type of utilities and benefits. Um, and now you're seeing timeshares together with, um, with sort of returns from the properties itself. Okay. And on top of that, what you're also seeing is that um, for example, like fan tokens, mm -hmm. um, which have been popular for quite a while, but right now in the STO space, we're adding royalties on top of that, yeah. which creates securities mm. at the end of the day. Yeah, cool. So we're seeing a lot more unique type of investments in the okay. STO space. Um, and the other thing that we, we, I think it's a key driving factor for the STO markets is the globalization of investments. Right? Like for example, um, a couple of the investments that we've launched off the platform, mm -hmm. um, we've had a minimum of $1 to oh. the investments. And okay. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of investors from Nigeria, from Philippines, mm -hmm. Indonesia, more so than the guys from the capital markets itself. Oh. And, and I, I think that that's purely because of the access that these guys have compared to guys say in Singapore and Korea, mm -hmm. where we have um, platforms like interactive brokers where we can just trade any stocks that we want already. Cool. Then what's the best way to learn about STO? Um, <laughs> what do you think? Because some people well, are still think that STO has like really high barrier to join in. Yeah, I mean, it's it's in terms of education, it's mm. not easy because you'd have to learn what's in the blockchain space on yeah. the crypto side and you on the security side. You need to get the concept of it, right? Yeah, true, mm. true. Um, but from my experience, mm. um, what I would recommend: put a dollar, put some money into, <laughs> put some money into a deal, <laughs> trade something, yeah. and then the moment you start, you Just start trade, yeah, then once you start learn trading, you actually gradually. start learning, right? yeah. especially when you have your money on the true. line as well. Yeah. Not don't use. Uh, fake money, I don't think that works. Yeah. It needs to be real platform, <laughs> real money. Yeah. And then you, you will feel yourself that you actually mm. need to go and learn, learn how, how to invest into these items or yeah. assets. That's the fastest way to learn something. Yeah, fastest way to lose money yeah. too. Put your money <laughs> first in. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you share your thoughts on the adoption of STOs by traditional financial institutions? Yeah, I, I think the, the STO space is starting to grow quite significantly, especially over the last year or so. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you've seen BlackRock come up with the yeah. BTC ETFs mm -hmm. and now they've launched like, some sort of STO format on yeah. uh, Securitize, right? Called yeah. Buildo, mm -hmm. BUIDL. ideal. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that I feel has opened up the, the rest of the financial institutions to start tokenizing a lot of the assets they have themselves. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing in a lot of different banks, right? Across the year, years, we've seen um, HSBC tokenize some bonds. We've seen oh. uh, DBS tokenize some bonds as well. Okay. So most of the major financial institutions have started to do some sort of POC with um, tokenization companies to tokenize some of the assets that they already mm. have. Then what do you think about Korea's STO market? Because we don't still feel quite familiar with that industry. Yeah, I, I think the regulations in, in Korea mm. are still moving rather slowly. Yeah. Um, but it is moving. I, I can tell, it is moving? I, I can see that it is moving, <laughs> really? it's just not very fast. Yeah. Um, but what we've been doing with the Korean mm. companies is that we've been helping the com Korean companies um, mm. set up vehicles offshore to get global yeah. investors into the Korean STO deals itself so that they can use our licenses, our platform to, to sort of um, uh, maximize the, the value for the STOs that they can, they can put on the platform. Oh, so how can we maximize it? By using iXwap. Oh, okay. <laughs> easy. That's easy. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've created a quite a seamless yeah. process to mm -hmm. launch on our platform. Uh, we've been uh, developing this for quite a while. The legal contracts and everything mm. are all built in, so it's a, everything's cookie cutter, right? So you come to the platform, you put, input the information, we do the DD, um, smart contracts are all audited already, and then once all that's done, you get the investors and your tokens get minted. So it's pretty oh, straightforward. Pretty cool. That sounds easy for me. <laughs> Somewhat. Then, yeah. In your opinion, what does the future hold for the STO market in the next five to ten years? 
I think the well, five to ten years. Yeah. I think the market still being will still be growing. Growing. Still? Yeah. Um, it's going to take a while for the market to be fully developed, mm. but I would think that within ten to twenty years, yeah. most of the market would start evolving towards okay. tokenization already. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about tokenization and STOs, they're basically just a different type of wrapper mm. to the traditional stocks that we already have. Right? First, we started with paper stocks, then we went to electronic stocks, and now we're just going on chain. Yeah. So it's just different kind of wrappers that we're okay. using, and it just takes a little bit of time for the rest of the guys to catch All up right. in terms of technology. Mm. Then when do you think is the best time to invest in STO then? Now. Now? Early, Isn't movers, it too early, early movers always make the most. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now is the best time to invest in STO, yeah, you reckon? Of course, reckon? of course. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Then is there any advice you would give to companies or investors who are considering participating in STO industry? Um, yeah, I, th I think a lot of companies looking at STO industry mm -hmm. should, shouldn't just be looking at, at a, from a fundraising perspective. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of other benefits to it, right? like fractionization, for example. Yeah. Um, something that I, I've mentioned before is that when you want to do a, a raise, right, would you rather one check of $1 million, or mm -hmm. would you rather 1 million investors into you, 1 million $1 investors into oh. your fund itself, or, or your company, whatever the, the mm -hmm. investment is. In the old days, I would think that most people would rather the $1 million check, because that's easy, yeah. you know, there's no paperwork, uh, that, you know, not much paperwork that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, whereas nowadays, I feel that a lot of companies would prefer to take the 1 million investors route, because that immediately produces customers mm -hmm. for your platform. Right. And because of blockchain, because of um, the new technology that's out there in the market, it reduces paperwork significantly and the cost mm. of actually doing this in the first place. Yeah. Mm, cool. And for the last question, um, what do you expect from this Korea's STO market in the future? Well, I mean, we've always been super interested in a lot of Korean assets. Mm. Um, I'm hoping that the regulations and all that speed up yeah. a lot faster so that mm. we can actually access a lot of the assets that are in the Korean market. Mm. I mean, IP in Korea has been exported across the world significantly, yeah. right? In the last decade or so. Yeah. Everywhere's K pop, everywhere's K, -pop, K entertainment. K food. Yep. K beauty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So even Netflix in Singapore, like mm -hmm. majority of the shows are all Korean. Oh. Yeah. And and I'm I think proud. that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I I'm hoping that the SEO industry starts opening up, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of these IPs can get exported into other countries. Because a lot of fan base across the world actually yeah. want to get into these investments, mm -hmm. right? But you can't. Because traditionally, all these investments are only backed by VCs within um, Korea itself. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm hoping that things open up a lot faster and mm. we can, the rest of the world can get access to these wonderful investments that you guys have here. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It was good to see you. Likewise.